Hey there, everyone. Happy Code Miss. Let's get into our next coding case scenario. So today I have a carpal tunnel repair surgery. So let's start at the top. Our preoperative diagnosis, right carpal tunnel syndrome, same for postoperative. The title of the procedure is the right carpal tunnel release. So what is a carpal tunnel release? That's when the surgeon actually cuts through the ligaments that are pressing down on the carpal tunnel and that makes room for the median nerve and the tendons that are passing through the tunnel. So usually it improves the pain that you might be having and the function of your uh, wrist and hand. So in here we have, they said they sent that specimen to pathology, which is probably that ligament that they kind of cut into, but we'll check out, we'll see what they, what they did here. Instruments, all counts were correct at the end of the case, no complications were encountered. So this is a 69 year old female who has been complaining of right hand pain, and that's something we really wanna pay attention to with carpal tunnels. Typically with carpal tunnel, they do only one hand at a time, so you wanna make sure that you're um, documenting correctly the right hand or left hand. Oftentimes if they have both of them, they'll do one and then do the other later. And in that case, it is a unrelated procedure. So you wanna make sure that you're using that appropriate modifier if it's still in the global period for that second procedure that they're having, if it's still within that 90 days of the first one. So, uh, been complaining of right hand pain, which was steadily growing worse over a prolonged period of time. The patient had tried non-operative therapy, which did not assist the patient. The patient had previous diagnosis of carpal tunnel and EMG showed compression of the right median nerve. As a result of these findings, the patient was sent to my office presenting with this history and was carefully evaluated. On initial evaluation, the patient had the symptomology of carpal tunnel syndrome. The patient at the time had the risks, benefits, and alternatives thoroughly explained to her. All questions were answered, no guarantees were given. The patient had agreed to the surgical procedure and the post-operative rehabilitation as needed. Now let's look at the details of the procedure. If you remember correctly, I said what we're gonna do oftentimes in our surgeries is use this title as a jumping off point. So in most cases, carpal tunnels are pretty straightforward, but we'll double check that in the body of our operative report. Patient was brought to the operating room, placed on supine on the operating table, prepped and draped in the sterile fashion and was given sedation. Patient was given sedation. Oh, isn't this fun? Sometimes we get this in operative reports. Uh, they, they, you know, have hiccups or, or dictation. Sometimes they like to blame Dragon for their errors. Dragon is a common dictation system. So, um, you know, they'll often <laughs> see at the provide, end of provider notes that they'll say, any errors that are uh, in this, this notation, uh, please clarify them directly with me because they could just be errors made by Dragon. So they like to sometimes think that they, they can escape their liability by blaming their dictation software and that does not hold up. So uh, patient had the area very carefully, oh, wait, almost missed this. Once this was complete, the area overlying the carpal ligament was carefully injected with 1% lidocaine with epinephrine. Patient had this area carefully and thoroughly injected with approximately 10 milliliters of lidocaine with epinephrine. And once this was complete, a 15 blade knife was then used to incise. So we are doing an incision into the skin opposite the radial aspect of the fourth ray. Careful dissection under direct visualization was performed through the subcutaneous fat as well as the palmar. So just kind of designating like, where are we? What are we doing? We're incising into the palmar fascia. Uh, a wet laner retractor was then used to retract the skin and careful dissection through the palmar fascia would then revealed the, the this, is, this is a fun dictation, then revealed the transverse carpal ligament. So that's right where we are. We're looking at this carpal ligament. Um, Oh, I highlighted the wrong one, carpal ligament. This was then carefully incised using a 15 blade knife. And once entry was again into the carpal canal, a freer elevator was then inserted and under direct visualization, the carpal ligament was then released. So that's our big key here. So where did I see that? Okay, the carpal ligament was then released. So that's exactly what he said he did up here, this carpal tunnel release. So let's check, make sure there was no complications, nothing else happened that we need to code for, or put on modifiers or anything like that. 
The transverse carpal ligament was then carefully released first in the distal direction until palmar fat could be visualized and by palpation no further ligament could be felt area was well hemostased with the 1% lidocaine with epinephrine and both proximal and distal dissection along the nerve was performed. Visualization of the transverse carpal ligament was maintained with the wet laner retractor as well as centric. Both the centric and ragnal were used to retract both the proximal and distal corners of the incision and the entirety of the area was under direct visualization at all times. So basically they're retracting it out. They're kind of just got that incision open so they can see what they're doing in there. Palmar fascia was released both proximately and distally, as well as the transverse carpal ligament. So they're releasing some of that fascia. Palmar fascia was released. As well as the transverse carpal ligament, direct palpation of the carpal canal demonstrated a full and complete release. Observation of the median nerve revealed an area of hypermia, uh, hyperema in the distal two-thirds of the nerve, which demonstrated the likely area of compression. So that's where they're saying, oh, this is where the problem had happened and why she was having the pain, because that was that area of compression there. Once this was complete, hemostasis was established using bipolar, bipolar cautery and some small surface bleeders and irrigation of the area was performed and then the closure was achieved. So they're closing her up now with 4O chromic suture in a horizontal mattress and interrupted stitch. Zero form was then applied to the incision. A bulky dressing was then applied consisting of Carelix and Ace Wrap and the patient was taken to the recovery room in a stable condition without any complications. So what we're going to look for in our index first, because this some of these can be tricky. You might not know exactly what we're looking for here, if we're looking for a bone or a nerve section. So if you're not sure, just go ahead and check in the index in the back. So we're actually doing a release. So where are our release codes? Here we go, release, carpal tunnel. And look, they only give us one code, 64721. So let's write that up here. 64721, and we'll check that out. So 64721, we have to go back up here, and this is a neuroplasty and or transposition. There's our semicolon, so that's where we stop. Median nerve at carpal tunnel. And there's some notes down here. It says, do not report with these other codes in conjunction with this. For endoscopic procedure, that's not what we did here. So this looks like it's our correct code, 64721. Now we need a modifier on this, right? Right? It's the right modifier, the RT because that's the side that we did. Now, if this patient comes in later on and gets their left side done and within that 90 day global period, and I'm gonna do a video on global periods because I did get requested to do that, you might get tempted to put a 58 modifier on here that it is staged or related, but that staged is really only supposed to be used when it's a subsequent surgery on the same body part and right and left are not the same body part. So it actually should be a modifier 79 if they did get the left done because the 79 is an unrelated procedure by the same physician or qualified healthcare professional during the post-operative period. So if in that 90 day global, they go back, get the left one done, it would be a 79 modifier because that left side has nothing to do with the right side. Those are two different body areas. All right, here we go. Carpal tunnel syndrome, and we need our additional characters here. Carpal tunnel syndrome, unspecified, oh, right. That's where we are, right upper limb, G5601. So there we are, that's our carpal tunnel release, 64721 with the RT modifier, G56.01. Most of these surgeries you'll see done pretty easily in a surgical center. I've actually seen some providers that do them now in the office. Isn't that kind of funky that they do them just in the office? But yeah, it does happen. So just to keep in mind though, if you do that subsequent one, you're gonna have to use the same code LT modifier, 79 modifier to indicate that the left side was unrelated to the right side, but it was done within that 90 day global period.